Hi, welcome everybody. Welcome to our first ever Tech Women at Intuit virtual panel. I'm excited to have you here today. Thank you so much for joining us, those of you who are online. And we're excited to, to be here today uh, to talk to you about um, Tech Women at Intuit, uh, te being a woman in tech, and for those of you starting your careers in tech. My name is Tracy Stone, and I'm joined here today with three of our amazing and inspiring uh, technologists. And I'm um, excited to uh, have you all join us today. We would like to ask you all to, to tweet out um, that you're here live joining us. So send a tweet out to at Intuit, hashtag TWI. And the reason why we want to have you do that is to know that you're here with us live and we're raffling an iPad off for those of you who are joining us live. If you're not live and you happen to catch this recording later, that's great too. We're, we're excited to have you uh, with us. So um, first, I want to introduce our three panelists. Um, so we'll go down the line here. Like I said, I have three amazing technologists with us. Each of you, we're going to ask you to just introduce yourselves, your name. Um, let's see what else. We had a fun fact as well. Mm -hmm. um, how long you've been at Intuit, what your current role is at Intuit. Um, and then we'll get into more detail about their, their journeys and, and their, how they got into tech later. But just we'll start there first. So Pragati, go ahead. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Pragati. I'm a software engineer here at Intuit. I work on the payments team, primarily on the web and mobile applications that help our small business customers get paid. Um, I've been at Intuit full time now for almost two and a half years. But before that, I was an intern in 2013 2014 in our um, San Diego office. So I worked on TurboTax when I was an intern there, um, full time now up in Mountain View. Um, before that, I graduated from Northeastern University after I majored in computer science and minored in economics. And my fun fact is um, my dad and I actually share the same birthday. So uh, my dad was a huge inspiration for me. Um, he's also in the tech field, uh, part of the reason why I chose tech as uh, my career. And so um, I feel lucky to share that special day with him. Awesome. Cool. Thank you for having me. All right, um, Jessica. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Jessica Cole. I'm a data scientist on the central data science team and focusing on customer success. I've been with Intuit for about three months. And before that, I went to Princeton University for a master's degree in electrical engineering. And I also did a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering in Taiwan, National Taiwan University. And also some fun facts about me. So uh, I was an auto singer in chorus when I was in the college. And once we did an acapella performance in the department concert as well. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, Very and also cool. I, I love Zumba dancing a lot. Mm -hmm. And I just got married last week. Oh, wow. So. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> Lots yeah. of fun facts. Yeah, so, so fun. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Maddie. Um, I'm a software engineer on a team within Quick books, which is for small business owners to like manage their accounting, and I help small business owners sign up for payroll here at Intuit. Um, before that, I graduated from Harvey Mudd College last May, and I started here at Intuit in January, so I'm kind of new still. I've only been here four months, um, and I majored in computer science at Harvey Mudd. And for my fun fact, um, I'm a radio DJ, so every Saturday I have a radio show um, on a station in San Francisco called BFF.FM. So, yeah. cool. That's oh, wow. Yeah. Fun things. Yeah. Fun to learn that about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> How wonderful. Um, so thank you all for submitting questions in advance. Um, we have received a number of wonderful questions. I know when we were, mm -hmm. were preparing with really thinking through all these questions, we were, we were so impressed and blown away with your thoughtful questions. And so um, we will work to get to many of those questions um, about and, and try to answer your what's top of mind for you. If, you. if we don't get to it, feel free to respond to some of the emails that you've gotten from us and um, some, submit some questions. We'd love to hear about it after the fact, too. Um, so what we want to do now is want to dive into a little bit more about our journeys and what journeys prior to yeah. get us com coming to into it. So I'll start with myself, and um, I, um, I'm, as I mentioned before, I lead the, the global uh, Tech Women and Intuit initiative. So it's a neat role, um, and I'm going to share with you how I how I got to this role. So um, I also have a background in uh, computer electrical engineering. Uh, I got my degree from Purdue University and worked for many years in different high tech um, companies in different roles um, on software development teams and manage software development teams and uh, different um, technical 
uh, it was a technical program manager. Um, I left the tech, uh, the corporate tech world, and for a kind of a career pause, and was at home with my family of three kids. And during that time, I ended up um, getting involved in a project at my daughter's school, and it was a STEM enrichment program. And um, we provided after-school programs uh, to encourage and inspire and expose girls to STEM uh, topics. Um, That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, it was it was incredibly fulfilling, and um, it, it expanded. It became my own small business, so I became an Intuit customer through that and wow. used Intuit products, um, and became um, a nonprofit. Uh, and um, and so we and did after school programs and weekend workshops. Where we taught young girls um, programming and circuit building workshops. So it was really neat. That's so cool. Yeah. So then I was looking to get back into the corporate world, and I came across this role. And so this role is um, leads the global tech women at Intuit initiative mm -hmm. and um, it was the perfect role for me and I love this job it, it was an opportunity for me to blend my corporate experience with my passion and interest for women in technology so a little bit more uh, before we dive into sort of all the uh, your career journeys a little bit more about tech women and into it it is like I said a global initiative is funded out of our CTO office so all of it covers all of product development <coughs> here at into it and um, our goal is is we work to um, build uh, the initiative around how we attract and recruit, retain and advance our technical women. And um, I work with our, our senior leaders and with our amazing technologists um, and on a set of programs and initiatives to uh, help us uh, as we worked uh, to, uh, like I said, to uh, recruit, and re attract and recruit, retain and advance tech women. Um, so Intuit is, is amazing in that wh where we are today, we have 29% of our workforce, our technical workforce is female. Um, wow, that's high. Yeah, it's know. very high. Yeah, but we're not satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're working to, so we have a set of programs to, to, um, to, to. Like uh, raise it even higher. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. Awesome. Yeah. And so amazing leadership support and, and the opportunity to work with our, our, um, our uh, technologists. So um, that's sort of my journey line, and as you can see, there was some kind of it wasn't always clear how and and um, how uh, and that's how I got to into it. So sometimes I think it's not always this kind of clear linear path, and mm -hmm. I imagine that not all of you woke up when you were born knowing that you'd be at into it. <laughs> yeah. And there might have been some zigs and zags or th some key to just points along the way. So I'd love to hear from each of you on what your journey line is as you approached uh, as you came to be here at Intuit with us. For so sure. Pragathi, do you want to go first? Sure. Thank you, Tracy. So uh, mine is similar, uh, definitely zigzaggy, but um, I did mention previously my dad was a huge influence in why I chose the tech field. Um, so when I was in middle school and a little bit more in high school, um, my dad was a coder. Um, now he's on the management side, still in the tech field, but um, he really encouraged me to consider this, this very unknown subject called computer science. Uh, I'd never taken a class in high school. In fact, it wasn't offered at my high school. Mm. Um, so I was just never exposed to it. And so because of my dad and a few other uh, members of my family who are also in the tech field, I gave it a shot. Um, the one thing that I did notice was I was always you know, interested in math and interested in science. And I just couldn't pin down what exactly I wanted to pursue. So I kind of looked at the, the bigger pieces. So I, went, I knew I wanted to do problem solving, some sort of analytical thinking. And so I, I narrowed it down to computer science and economics. And my first year of college, I took two computer science classes, two economics classes, and turns out, I loved going to my computer science classes. I loved doing the homework for it, not so much for the economics ones. So once I realized that I really did have the passion for the problem solving piece of engineering and computer science and programming, um, that's when I knew uh, that that was what I wanted to pursue in college. The aha moment I had with my career, though, was my first internship. Um, two years after uh, I started taking computer science classes, I got my first internship at Intuit. 
And um, I remember the first month, I really didn't have any idea of what I was doing. Um, I had a lot of great guidance um, from my team members and my manager. Um, but the aha moment that I referred to came when I could apply something that I had learned in class to something that was a real world product, something that people would be using. And we shipped it, and real people were using something that I had written. And that, that moment was just, I knew this was the career for me. Um, so after that, I knew that um, I just really had to narrow down on what exactly in um, the tech field I wanted to do. And so now I do more product-focused, uh, front-end facing engineering work. Uh, and I've never looked back since. Cool. So say, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so um, for me, I think I first started in the field of electrical engineering mm -hmm. simply because it's the most prosperous industry back in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And also I'm, um, for the four years of college, I think I did pretty well on the courses, but still I'm not sure if that's really the thing for me because it's, um, it's not like I felt a lot of passion in it, but yeah. still that's something I can do fairly well with. Um, but then I think the aha moment came <laughs> in. <laughs> when um, I had this chance in my senior year to do an um, internship at a tech consulting company mm -hmm. and as a business consultant intern. It's not a technical role, but rather a business consultant. But then that's when I found out that it's really interesting to solve important business questions mm -hmm. with some analytics and also quantitative methods. That's also, um, and I think that's a great intersection of my skills and my interests. That mm -hmm. is the intersection of business aspect and also um, the tools I have mm -hmm. about analytics and also quantitative methods. Mm -hmm. So um, that's when I decided that this is the field I'm going to pursue. And then I found out that if I want to learn more about this field and also to pursue, to be exposed uh, uh, to be uh, exposed to more yeah. opportunities, then it would be a great decision if I came to the States. So that's when I decided to apply for a master's degree uh, program. So oh. that's that's why I came to the States and I went to Princeton University. And then it's also a great moment when I got another internship opportunity from Microsoft that I had this chance to work with real world user data and also to find insights mm -hmm. from those user activities. So that also strengthens my confidence in myself to um, continue this path in this field. And um, then I come, came across this interesting position at Intuit that can, that's also a data scientist position and also can make me work on interesting customer care problem, like um, how to optimize the um, call center and yeah. also how to um, extract insights from um, users' feedback and uh -huh. by some text analytics methods. Uh -huh. So I think this just um, this whole thing just add on together and somehow the dots are connected. Yeah, that's, yeah. Awesome. that's yeah. neat. Yeah. And that's how you got to become the data scientist in the data scientist role here at Intuit. And yes, exactly. Yeah, wonderful. Oh, neat. Yeah, that's really cool. You both found computer science and like data science to be at the intersection of like all these other interests you had. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's cool totally. you like found that through like real world experience and your internships mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah. So for me, um, I also had mm -hmm. no coding experience before college. My high school also didn't offer it, like Pragati mentioned, um, as hers, and. Uh, my school is like a really small liberal arts engineering school and they make you take classes in every science. Um, so I had never really taken computer science, didn't really know what it was until this like intro class I had to take at my um, college. And after taking it, I realized I liked it, um, but I wasn't sure I wanted to pursue it because everyone in my classes kind of like seemed like they'd like come out the womb like coding, like they <laughs> like before they could yeah, speak. They before were, they could speak, they, they were, were in code. We're talking code. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I was like, that's not me. Like yeah. I can't relate. Um, but I was still like kind of interested in it, and I was trying to get involved with stuff in my school. Um, and actually, for me, I had like an aha moment at. Um, I went to like a hackathon my school had and I was in like the beginner category um, and me and a group of friends like stayed up all night like building this app and it was so fun. It was like super fun um, and I was like wow I can actually do this. I like learned a few languages like that night like making in the process of making this app and I was like oh like I can do this like mm -hmm. it's fine that I just started and then 
um, to kind of supplement that, like, a few weeks later, I went to Grace Hopper, um, and, like, seeing, like, all these women who are, like, really powerful and, like, also doing computer science, I was like, oh, I can do this, too. Like, <laughs> this is cool. And then to, like, with those two, um, like, experiences right next to each other, I was like, all right, like, I'm going to make this uh, my major. And I was, like, kind of late. Um, I didn't declare it till like, either the end of my sophomore year or junior year. Um, so... It was, like, a little later than a lot of people in my grade, so I had to work a little harder to catch up. Um, mm -hmm. But in the end, it got me to where I am today, um, which is a software engineer at Intuit. That's, That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's no one way to do it, huh? No nope. different yeah. <laughs> And you might yeah. find different opportunities along the way that That's help right. kind of steer you along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thinking about, so we have a couple software engineers with Pragathy and Maddie, and mm -hmm. then and then Jessica's a data scientist. I want you to help our, our, our audience members about uh, enlighten them on your day to day. What kind of tools mm -hmm. and technologies do you use day to day? So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So yeah. okay, so I'll kick this off. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm primarily um, a front end engineer, uh, technically full stack. So we have uh, a little bit of ownership on every part of the software development cycle. So um, my day to day really involves few meetings. Um, most of the day is spent coding. So in the morning we do have daily stand up. So it is a very team based environment, and everything we do um, from the coding piece it's reviewed to decision making, you know, we make decisions as a team, we, we look at what's best for the customer, um, everything is a team environment. So a lot of working together, um, even if the coding is done at my desk by my by myself <laughs> with my headphones on, um, it's always, you know, a discussion. So I'll go ahead and ask my, my the rest of my team members, is this the right way to do this? Um, mm -hmm. Could this be more efficient? Mm -hmm. Could this be approached yeah. in a different manner? Um, so that's from a high level. The actual technology that we use, um, JavaScript for the front end. Uh, right now, we used to use Backbone JS. That's uh, one of the frameworks for JavaScript. We're moving off to React, uh, which was actually created by Facebook. It's cutting edge technology, or is considered so. Um, so I highly encourage you to look into that if you're interested in web development. Um, and then back end, we use Java. Um, and a more there's more to that um, for our day to day. So we do release management, we do testing. So every engineer mm -hmm, has to write mm -hmm. tests. Um, so, you know, every part of the, of the software cycle is owned by every engineer. So that's, that's from, awesome. yeah, yeah, high level. <laughs> yeah, so my day is actually really similar to um, Pragathy's. We use the same tech stack pretty much. Um, and then I will say, like, most of Intuit or all of Intuit uses GitHub um, for, like, source control and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I definitely recommend. I know I learned that, like, junior year of college. If you haven't learned it yet, like, that's a good thing to know for, like, most industry. Um, but yeah, same thing with daily stand-up, same tech stack. And like for anything you want to add to the code base, um, you for our team, like another team member has to review it and like might ask you questions on like why you did something that way or correct like an error or something, um, which is really cool. It's like very collaborative. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. OK, so how about, yeah, how about yeah, the data scientist world? <laughs> tell us, tell us what's, what's the similar or different with that, yeah. with your tools and yeah. technology. So I think in terms of like working in a corporate environment and also cooperation within the team, I think um, Praxi and Medi already covered a lot yeah, about that. Similar. So I just want to add to um, the data scientist tool set. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, Python is mostly used um, within the company to do some prototyping and mm -hmm. also do some modeling. To, to solve some data science problems. And also um, SQL or SQL mm -hmm. is also a great skill to have because um, you also need to query the database to extract data set you want yeah. and also sometimes use that to clean up your data set as well. Mm -hmm. So that is like tool wise. And um, for some knowledge base, I would say that um, machine learning and artificial intelligence yeah. and also statistics mm -hmm. are the basics for doing um, data science problems. Mm -hmm. So having that knowledge and um, machine learning and, exactly, and yeah. artificial yeah. intelligence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. I think those are like good courses to take in college mm. or in grad school as well. Wonderful. Cool. Yeah. Wonderful. All right, so we, we now we're going to take a question that somebody submitted. So this is from Celine uh, from Harvey Mudd, and here's her question. What are important things to look for when trying to find a company that has a positive work culture, especially with respect to women and people of color? 
And so, given that this person's from Harvey yeah. Mudd, yeah, <laughs> would you start us off? Yeah. You're from, you're somebody from your alma mater. For so sure. that's the question. Yeah. So, hi, Celine. Um, I can definitely answer this because this is something I was looking for when um, I was looking at companies. And so I took a few different approaches. Um, one thing is that at career fairs and other places where I could talk to like recruiters or people from the company, other engineers, um, I would ask them like, what is your percentage of women that's at your company? Like Tracy mentioned like the Intuit percentage and like I would ask people and if a percentage of, I, what I didn't cover is a percentage of women in leadership roles too, which yeah. into it is mm-hmm. is very high as well. So yeah, so which is also super important. Total, yeah, yeah, and like women in engineering roles specifically. Yeah, and a lot of times recruiters wouldn't know, or they would bring over the only woman yeah. that was like at the booth and be like, "Hey, do you know the answer to this?" Um, and that was like a huge turnoff to me because I was like, if like. Um, diversity and like promoting women and people of color in tech is important to your company it should trickle down to every single employee Mm -hmm. it shouldn't just be like a marketing goal to like attract talent there has to be some initiative to keep talent there Um, and like you shouldn't kind of know these things or have a general idea um, and be really welcoming and another thing is like how the interviewers would treat me and how recruiters and engineers there would treat me if I was like in an on site Mm -hmm. Um, So that's, like, just a huge thing to keep in mind because those are the people you're going to interact with, right, like the other engineers, and they need to have that mindset of having a culture that centers women and people of color and queer people. Um, And if the engineers don't have that, it's not going to be a very positive environment, and it might even be, like, unsafe. Um, So that was, like, a huge thing. And another thing I did, especially for, like, startups and smaller companies, was go straight to their website and look. Um, A lot of times they'll have pictures of the people at the company, and if it was all white or all dudes, I'd be like, I don't want to work here. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's just, like, a few things. Um, So definitely just, like, paying attention to interactions you have with them and, like, their hierarchy, like you Mm -hmm. said, um, who is in the leadership roles, like, what are their identities, and, yeah, do you see your own identity in the leadership? Yeah, I love that, Maddie. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I'll add to that is um, I think it's really important to look at the, the mission that the company mm-hmm. has. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so here at Intuit, we are very empathetic just by nature, and so we care a lot about our customers, but another big stakeholder for our company is actually the employees themselves. Yeah. And so um, you know we are encouraged mm-hmm. to bring our whole self, and um, oftentimes companies will publish their, their mission and their values mm-hmm. and and um, all the the important things Mm -hmm. that they care about. So similar to how you're Mm -hmm. saying you know, look up their leadership board or um, their their employee profiles. Most companies have these online, so yeah. just take a quick look, and yeah. um, you'll you'll know the mm-hmm. second um, you see a company really care about issues that are important to you. It, it'll be out there, and it'll scream out at you. Um, so, be apparent. Yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah, and I think one interesting fact I would like to add to that is that when I interviewed with Intuit, um, that found that. Two out of five of my interviewers are actually women. Wow. So I think it, it would be also useful to observe the um, employees you have the chance to interact mm-hmm. with yeah. um, mm-hmm. during interview or at some campus yeah. recruiting yeah. fair. And um, surprisingly, after I joined the team, I found out that half of my team are actually women. So that That's really, amazing. Yeah, That's I think awesome. that really yeah. um, says something about the the value that the company values. That yeah. is the variety in its and employees. that diversity. Yeah. And all mm-hmm. the teams. Exactly. Yeah, and it, yeah that's yeah. true. And it really just makes your workday so much more fun. Um, yeah. For example, my manager is a woman, and she I just find her so inspiring. Her story, you know, just like mm-hmm. each one of us, she has a very unique story, and um, it's just more fun. Like, we go work out together after work sometimes, and, um, you know, when you have something already yeah. in common with somebody, um, I think it just helps, you know, make you more successful yeah. and... Just have fun with it. That's yeah. wonderful. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Celine, for submitting that, that wonderful question. Yeah, that was a great question. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the next question, we're going to switch to, um, so a lot of the people who are, are, are online listening to us and, and will listen to the recording are probably in the mode of interviewing for either yeah. an internship or their first job out of college. And so um, let's let's talk a little bit about that process. That can be intimidating, right, <laughs> that, that, for that interview. Um, so I'm going to start with... Um, 
I, mean, I don't, well, we have, so, so Pragathy's on our, one of our college assessors, so she'll have the perspective from being an assessor, and I know that both Maddie and Jessica recently went through the process mm -hmm. themselves. Um, so, so who, who wants to kick us off from uh, just sharing about that, that process of, of what it looks like and in, in interviewing for your, either your internship or your job? Yeah. Sure. I can kind of kick it off from sure. the assessor point of view. So, um, yeah, we totally get it. I, I've been on, the, on both sides. But um, from an assessor side, really, you know, we're just looking for fundamental things. So um, the process is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, we look for not just the technical chops, but also behavioral. So we want, you know, people who are great to work with, have a positive attitude, um, but also are an amazing engineer. So from a very high level, um, that's really all we look for. Now, the intimidating thing is for a lot of people is actually, I think, the technical question. Mm -hmm. um, so it could range from anything, right? So you're essentially given some sort of technical question, you're allotted a specific time, I think the time um, puts in some pressure too, and um, you're expected to solve it using Either some companies will do um, one or two specific languages, some companies will allow you to choose uh, your language mm -hmm. of preference, um, but it is it is technical. Um, so there are various ways to do this. It could be an in-person interview, it could be a virtual interview, mm -hmm. and each has their set of anxieties, I think, unique anxieties. But um, from an assessor point of view, really all that matters is um, the thought process. So given this, this question, how are you able to work through this problem um, in either an efficient way or a collaborative way. So um, I've had candidates who, who see the question, they just get it. It just clicks in their head, um, and they're able to, you know, code it. Not perfectly. Nobody does that the first mm -hmm. time. Um, but, you know, they're able to just make the, make the connection and um, work with me on getting, getting the code done. And I've also had candidates um, who, who, don't, who don't make the connection. And that's okay, because it is collaborative, and um, you're encouraged to ask questions, and and you know, if you get stuck, you're, you're encouraged to kind of, you know, where is it exactly, like pinpoint where you're stuck. Um, so I'll, I'll keep it high level and let you guys maybe talk yeah. a little bit more um, specifics. Yeah, sure. So um, I think from the interview perspective, I found that communication is always the most important thing mm -hmm. um, because um, there are definitely times that you feel stuck during the interview process and yeah. you don't, you know, nothing to do. But um, I think uh, what people are looking is not just about how much knowledge you have about the problem, but it's also more about how do you communicate your thought process yeah, and sure. if you have the ability to work with people people as well mm -hmm. because it's always about working as a team yeah, not just right. as an individual so um, I would say um, always focus on um, communicating your thoughts speak up what you have in mind not just thinking inside your heads and um, try to show that you are willing to communicate your ch the challenge encountered and also ask for clarifying questions to mm -hmm. um, make sure you, you understand the problem mm -hmm. and also to make the interviewers um, also know that uh, you are still following and also you are trying to solve you have the positive attitude to solve the problem yeah. I think that's that would be the most important yeah, thing yeah your approach yeah, um, I think Pragathy, your answer is really cool about like from the assessor's perspective and like what you're looking for. And Jessica, you have a little more about like actually being an interviewee. Um, and yeah, I also have a similar experience to you of being in the interview. Um, and mine, they definitely asked about like some data structures and algorithms questions. Um, and then also they asked like, they told me a little bit about Intuit's values and asked me about how mm -hmm. I felt about them. Um, and so I think that was like really cool because I learned a lot about Intuit like through the interview, um, whereas I hadn't known a lot about it before. Um, and so yeah, that was really cool. Mm -hmm. And another thing is like a lot of the interview was spent me talking about my projects that I've worked on and things like I knew really strongly because I had made them um, and just specific questions about how I implemented things um, mm -hmm. and I thought that was really cool because I got to talk about my projects and it wasn't just like random like specific um, like algorithms questions it was like what have you done um, what like how did you do it and like talk about it so and I'll just quickly add um, just to get 
really specific. Um, thank you for bringing yeah. up the fundamentals. So um, going diving a little bit deeper into what tech fundamentals we look for, um, algorithms, mm -hmm. absolutely, um, and uh, data structures. So you know, know your your what's the difference between a stack and a queue? Yeah, you know, uh -huh. that's that's a classic one. Um, or why would you choose one mm -hmm. data structure to implement the solution over another? Um, you'll you'll get questions that's more like a conversation um, than really just us shooting questions at you and expecting to get these perfect yeah. answers. Um, that's definitely not it. So, you know, for example, if Maddie were to say, you know, I used, um, you know, this algorithm, this sorting algorithm because of X, Y, Z, maybe as an assessor, I can see a better way to do it. And mm -hmm. I, I want to ask her follow-up questions to see if she'll get there. It's not saying that what you did was wrong. You know, assessors don't tend to really want to trick you. They just want to figure out, like, oh, is there is there some other thought process that this candidate can think of um, that will mm -hmm. yeah. solve yeah. this problem in a different way? Mm -hmm. So um, kind of having that conversation. Just think of it like a conversation with one of your friends, one of your classmates, or your partner um, for your project that you're working on in your computer science class. Just think of it like that. And I think, you know, that will help you calm mm -hmm. down a little bit. Yeah. So what about like so the on the calming down part? What if you're in an interview? And this is what uh, is Anjali from University of Texas at, at Austin asks, and I think this has happened to all of us. We've all we felt this. What if you're in an interview and you just are completely stumped, and mm -hmm. you're just and you're this the the, the pressure, the stress, it gets the better of you, and and what do you, what do you do? So I think some of it, you guys, there's some pieces of what you guys said before, yeah. but let's just handle that head on. What what do you, what would you suggest to somebody? That's definitely the worst. <laughs> um, that's definitely happened to me a bunch. Um, so yeah, in the beginning of my interview process, I did like so many interviews and I'd get stuck all the time. And it wasn't that I didn't know like mm -hmm. what it was. It could be asking me the most simple question or like, what's your name? Like, and I'd just be like, what? <laughs> um, I'd just get really nervous because um, I felt like my whole like career is resting on this interview, even if it was just for an internship or something. Um, and so one thing I started doing is, like, beforehand, like, reminding myself, like, you only need one job. Like, you can do 100 interviews. It doesn't matter if you do bad on all of them. Like, you really just need to do well on one. And the reason that helped me is because it helped me relieve the pressure of the interview I had in front of me. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, it wasn't like my whole life is riding on this interview because, like, I could interview with this company again or, um, like, I could do another interview. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of like, okay, it's not as big of a deal as I think it is. And that helped me, like, not put so much pressure on myself and not get as stressed out um, and really be able to focus on the interview and the questions and have a more, like, clear-headed mind. Um, mm -hmm. And, like, actually... Like, sometimes I would, like, skip interviews because I was so nervous, and, like, I almost skipped my into an interview. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Glad you didn't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I, like, called my dad. I was like, hey, Dad, um, I'm not going to any of my interviews today. I'm too nervous. Like, it's chill. And he was like, no, you're being a dumb. Like, just go. Like, it's really fine. Like, chug a beer and just, like, go, and, like, it'll help you get your nerves down. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to do that, but, like, sure, I'll just go. <laughs> I'll and, go. like, yeah. yeah, I was like, I'm going to have some water and, like, calm down, like, breathe, and then yeah. I, like, went to my interview, and, like, spoiler alert, like, I got the job into it, so <laughs> <laughs> it was, like, really cool, um, and I just realized, like, I don't know, just, like, to calm myself down and, like, not put my whole life Lots on it. pressure on yourself. Yeah, yeah, and really just ask questions, and if I do get stuck, just, like, keep asking questions, yeah. um, like, what they want and what they're looking for. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Um, so I'll speak kind of, like, from the assessor perspective again. Uh, so, I mean, of course, it happens to everybody. I think we've all been there, and it, it feels terrible. Yeah. Um, but there are ways that you can come out of it. And I think at the end of the day, you have to realize the person the interviewer is it's just another human right so they mm -hmm. understand that this is such a nerve-wracking experience mm -hmm. I mean nobody nobody in this world <laughs> look forward looks forward to an interview yeah. and if there's someone out there I want to hear from you because <laughs> I want to know what you're doing right because um, it's it's just a lot of yeah. pressure and so the interviewer gets that and um, they're there to help you so if your way of handling maybe a stressful situation is to just um, maybe just take a a minute, you know, in silence to just gather your thoughts, you can totally feel free to ask your interviewer for a minute. You can say, sorry, I just, for some reason, I'm having issues, like, thinking. Um, 
can you just give me a minute of quiet time or two minutes of quiet time? I'm just going to think about this. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's possible. Or, um, for example, like if I'm ever stuck at work, this happens all the time. If I'm ever stuck on a problem, I just need to go clear my head. I go on a walk. Um, I go on a walk and I come back 15 minutes later and I'm looking, I'm approaching the problem in a different, different way. way. Yeah. So, you know, it's totally acceptable and understandable that um, taking some time away from the problem will help. So please ask for that. Yeah. Um, most interviewers will totally accommodate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I will add to uh, Praxley's point that uh, I think from an assessor's point of view, it's also um, about um, assessing whether this person you can cooperate with him or she after after he got into the yeah, company. Definitely. And so it's always mm -hmm. about communication again. Yeah, because, that's what you said before. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So I think rather than thinking of it as a test, I think it's better to think of it as an um, opportunity to cooperate with the viewer to solve a yeah. problem together yeah. mm -hmm. and also to know more about each other and more about the company culture. Yeah. Perhaps that this kind of mindset will help you to yeah. calm down, not feel so so much pressure exactly, and yeah. also to really think through the, the problem. Yeah, also, um, if you feel like the questions you're seeing you're not familiar with or like you're getting stuck because you're not familiar with the content, um, two resources I really liked in preparing were Cracking the Coding Interview and Hacker Rank. And after I learned about those, every question I had gotten in interviews was from one of those sources. Mm -hmm. um, and so just like practicing so mm -hmm. that you're like very confident in the material as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, practice 100% yeah. agreed on that. Great point, Maddie. I think practice is the key. Um, mm -hmm. So I remember my first interview was actually for Intuit for my internship, mm -hmm. and I hadn't even practiced coding mm -hmm. on a whiteboard. I mean, that's wild to me yeah. because I do that so <laughs> often now as a professional, but in college, I feel like I didn't really do that. Mm. Um, so even, you know, if you can grab like a whiteboard and just practice writing out code, mm -hmm. because exactly. in school you're typing, typing code, yeah. and depending on the interview format, that might not be a given. So just practicing different forms, getting comfortable with the tools that mm. you're given, um, all of these will help ease your nerves, and um, that way you won't get, you know, stuck in that, yeah. that mindset of, oh, Oh, no, I'm stuck. <laughs> you know, you, you want to make sure you're most you're at your most comfortable to really um, yeah. yeah get this. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right, another question. And we'll we'll we've got it from a couple different people in a couple different ways. We'll try to tie these two together. Okay. But Tiffany from Washington University in St. Louis asked us for advice for students who switched to a computer science major halfway through college, and then going through the recruitment process for an internship. And then Jasmine from the University of Michigan asks about the most impactful course that was during mm -hmm. your, your undergraduate studies. So maybe we can talk about this. So people who may have switched, so I know that you talked about declaring a major late, or what, what can they do as in they're, you know, if they feel like they're behind, you know, everybody, everybody feels like they yeah. might be. <laughs> but first of all, you're not. But if you feel like you are, and what are the courses or things you can do to prepare? So um, yeah. maybe Maddie, you want to start with you since you you switched, you declared a major late. You yeah. Know, maybe you felt some of that. So any kind of advice for? Yeah, definitely. Um, it does feel really stressful, feeling like you're behind. Um, but really, you're not behind. Like you're still in the major, you're still learning. Um, and a lot of times, if you're trying to apply for an internship or a job, um, trying to get that initial experience is really key. One way I did that and I think is really useful is like um, side projects and solo projects. And you might feel like you don't have time at school because you're so busy with coursework. So during like winter break or summer, even just like a quick f like couple day project, mm -hmm. like just showing that you're interested in the field is like really big and giving you something to talk about in interviews. Um, I mentioned I did a hackathon at my school, and so I would do the hackathons almost every semester. Um, mm -hmm. And it was like a one weekend thing, and you build a project from scratch. Um, and those ended up being the things I would talk about in my interviews most because there were these like cohesive projects or apps, um, and it they were things that I made because I wanted to make them and because I was passionate about them. So definitely building up your resume, having like a project section on your resume with stuff you've worked on. Mm -hmm. um, linking to your GitHub or anywhere mm -hmm. the projects are accessible. And um, like looking at internships that are for beginners because they know you don't have experience for the most part if you're like in college. Um, and just, yeah, looking for those opportunities early, like typically in the fall, going to all the career fairs, talking to mm -hmm. as many people as possible and just trying to get that initial experience. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Now, Jessica, how about from your perspective, especially I think what was interesting in your journey is the internship and how that was helpful yeah. for you, sort of exposing you to the field of analytics and data science. So maybe you can tell, share that and tie that to mm -hmm. advice to these uh, yeah. students who are asking yeah, that definitely. question. Definitely. So um, I think the, the concept of internship is to give you the chance to work in the corporate environment mm -hmm. and also to work with real world data and also to um, showcase your ability mm -hmm. to mm -hmm not just um, play with some toy data set mm -hmm. and also not just some theoretical work, but you can actually apply your knowledge and also mm -hmm. skill sets to solve some real world problems. So I think um, I would suggest always try to get an internship, make, treat that as a um, first priority rather than take like impactful courses because mm -hmm. um, internship really says a lot about your ability to really um, work in that sort of environment. Yeah. So I think um, the internship experience, if, um, my internship experiences is especially useful to um, showcase that my um, ability to really apply the tools mm -hmm. and to real world business questions and also to um, to communicate with my colleagues. Mm -hmm. So I think internship definitely can bring a lot of uh, challenges and also opportunities to for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, definitely not much yeah. to add. I think you guys covered all of the basics. Um, I'll quickly tackle what's like an important class to take in college. I don't think there really is one. Mm -hmm. um, I think in general, it's just, you know, getting the fundamentals. So for Jessica, it was, you know, statistics mm -hmm. and more analytical. And I think for engineering, it's more project-based, yeah. seeing something end-to-end. -end. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once you figure out what exactly it is that interests you, and maybe you don't know, maybe, maybe it has mm -hmm. to be, you take a variety of classes and that's how how you figure out what it is that is most of interest to you, um, but it's really there, I don't I don't feel like there's one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Did you true. find one that was like most useful to your like job now? Like, are there you any know, classes think, you draw upon? I think um, personally. Inter the internship experience was a lot more uh, valuable mm -hmm. than any specific class. So the mm -hmm. thing about coursework is it is kind of like playing with a toy, uh, yeah. a toy data set, yeah. or you know, it is. Yes, it is contained. So yeah. um, you know, I actually kind of struggled how to apply what I learned in college to the mm -hmm. real world. But I can easily now see the connection with yeah. what, when when I'm working in the real world. Oh yeah, I learned this in college. Yeah. Right, I learned about this algorithm, and you can make yourself better yep. in that way um, but yeah I think Maddie um, you you hit it on mm -hmm. the head with projects personal yeah. projects and um, internships hackathons mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So let's switch gears. We had a number of questions come in around um, the dynamics of working in tech. Mm. The reality is it's still male dominated. So they're asking us to give to, to give some of our insights around um, working in this field as a female, and it's primarily male di uh, male dominated. What is some advice, or how do you navigate this, and how do you you know some of those uh, some of that day to day relationships and and um, dynamics? So. Um, any th thoughts on that? How you? So I know Pragati, when we when we first ta talked about this before, you had some uh, some great thoughts on this. Yeah, yeah. let me start Actually. with you. So um, you know, I think this is something that is on top of a lot of people's minds right now, especially with the Me Too movement, is coming into light. Um, you know, it's not easy being uh, a little bit different from what is the norm. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that could be, you know, gender, it could be ethnicity, it, should be cult it could be culture, it mm -hmm. could be anything. Um, it's, in general, um, more difficult to be the different one. Um, but one thing, I, personally, that has always helped me is kind of um, asking more questions than, um, I guess, answering. <laughs> so if, by nature, you're more curious about mm -hmm. the people that you work with and um, you kind of put yourself out there, it's not easy to get out of your comfort zone and put yourself out mm -hmm. there, but, um, you know, when you mm -hmm. are the different one, you're going to have to do that. So um, finding ways to, to be, you know, more engaged mm -hmm. um, and, you know, f asking questions for me personally is one way that I do it. Yeah. Um, I think because so, Intuit's so relationship-driven, it's probably very natural here for us. And, and I think you, you mentioned, too, about 
um, people enjoy uh, answering or talking about their interests and their passions. Yeah. So finding something yeah. that you can ask them about, I think, is a neat way to do that. Yes, definitely. To and engage with them and, and feel feel you can right, um, right. empowered to have that. Yeah, yeah. and you know, it is it is. I guess intimidating um, when mm -hmm. maybe your entire team is maybe there's not that much in common that you have with your entire team in that yeah. case um, it could be intimidating to kind of go in there and start asking questions yeah. or start asking them about you know their their passions or their interests um, so one thing that um, Tracy has mentioned before yeah. that I, I love is kind of finding one person mm -hmm. um, and really getting to know them really well so if Jessica for example is that person that I I choose to really, you know, ask for coffee maybe, then I build that that relationship with just Jessica. And then hopefully the hope is Jessica will now bring me um, to and Maddie and, and Tracy yeah. and the whole group as, as a whole. And that's really how, you know, you build up your network. Mm -hmm. And you'll be surprised. You might not think you have so much in, in common with somebody that yeah. is so different from you. But in my experience, I am blown away. Every time I meet somebody who I think is so different from me, I am just blown away by actually how much we have yeah. in common. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll be surprised. I think the, yeah. the thing is we often tell ourselves that this is scary, um, but just go out there and put yourself out there and you'll be surprised pleasantly. Yeah, and I think this applies too for um, just joining a new organization or new company. For so sure, yeah. just b building those, and Definitely. I like the idea of um, that breaking it down like one-on-one -on -one relationships and yeah. building. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, it's great. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. the one-on-one -on -one piece of it. Yeah, yeah. Have you found that work for you? So in your time that you've been here, it definitely it? has. Yeah, I'm pretty new, um, but there have been a few times where I'll reach out to someone one-on-one -on -one and try to get to know them so that um, I can relate to the whole group more. And I'm still doing it. Um, but actually, and then I also started talking about like my interests um, to see, like, to throw it out there, see if anyone like cared That's about stuff I care about. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was pleasantly surprised to find that like there are people on my team who do. And like last week, my manager showed me um, our team members like photography online because mm -hmm. I told him like I'm gonna be taking photo classes. Um, and I was like, whoa, that's so cool. And so we were just like looking through Building his photos. Yeah, and just like finding out something new about my teammates. So now I have more to talk to them about. That's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, we've, so another question here. This, is, this came in from Emma from UC Berkeley, but this is a very common question. So um, Emma, thank you for asking it. The question is around how have you dealt with imposter syndrome? Um, in the tech industry specifically, but in general. So um, for those of you that may not know what the, the term imposter mm -hmm. syndrome is, we so I'll try to define it, you guys can add into yeah. that. I think imposter syndrome is really, you feel like you're this feeling inside that you're you're just not adequate or you're a fraud and somebody's gonna find out, you know, like somehow I passed, I, got, I graduated, but there was probably a mistake in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. So you constantly are are feeling like you're, um, uh, there's, a, there's something that's not, uh, real or it's a fraud and, and you're going to get found out mm -hmm. so um tell us about the so, so any uh, so tell us about your thoughts on that and and do you do you have that kind of internally going on inside and and are you do you face that so yes. jessica so think, do you want to start yeah. with that yeah so i think to be honest i still feel it sometimes even now um but i also found myself better and better at coping with that kind of um, yeah. feeling inside. Um, and I found one method to be particularly useful is to encourage myself. So I literally talk to myself like, hey, Jessica, you can really do this. You are surrounded by these amazing colleagues and in an environment that you can really learn a lot from others. But the most important thing is that you're chosen for a reason mm -hmm. because um, they also believe in you, that you mm -hmm. can be yeah. as good as them and they, are, they can also learn something from you. So this is the, the kind of things I often talk to myself yeah. and um, I found it to be really useful. And the other thing I would suggest is to ask questions because I think we feel this imposter syndrome in mm -hmm. times when we feel there's a huge challenge that we may have difficulties in in, in dealing with the problems. Mm -hmm. But um, I found that asking questions, uh, uh, sorry, asking um, help from your mm -hmm. colleague can be really useful because you'll be surprised how much they are willing to share with you and yeah. also to help you um, get through the process as well. Yeah. Absolutely. 
That's great. Yeah, another um, coping mechanism that I have, I absolutely 100% feel it. I still feel it all the time. <laughs> but you've been here a few years. And it's yeah, not, it's, it's not something that, that wipes away so exactly. easily, does it? No? Yeah, so, um, you know, I think when you're early career and you're still new to something, it, it happens more often, but I don't think it ever goes no, away, really. <laughs> um, but one thing that I've found extremely helpful, and I'm very lucky to have this, is um, having an ally or a mentor that you can rely on. And for me, at work, that is the tech lead on my team. Um, we work together very well, mm -hmm. and we've worked together for the entire two and a half years that I've been here. And um, I remember the, the first time I, it really hit me was um, I had to go into a meeting and represent my team. And I'd only been on the team for uh, about six months. And I had to go into this team with all these people I'd never worked with before from different teams. And we were all going to collaborate and make some decisions on how to integrate with each other. And I had to go represent my team on my own. And I remember being so nervous mm -hmm. for it. I feel like I prepped for days for this meeting. And um, it's just, you know, a one hour meeting. It's just a discussion. But, um, you know, I still got in this mental trap of, mm -hmm. oh, I don't think I can do it. But guess mm -hmm. what? I did do it. And <laughs> I did do a good job. And um, one thing that really helped was I worked with my mentor and made sure I was very prepared. Mm -hmm. You know, I asked him so many questions. I asked him for help. I asked him, you know, is this a good approach? Is this a valid piece yeah. to bring up? Um, all of that. Um, and this happens every day. It's not like a, a formal mentorship or anything uh, like that. It's just, you know, he's my go-to person. It's somebody I trust, mm -hmm. and it's somebody that is a positive influence on me. Yeah. So just finding that one person, um, and it doesn't have to be formal. And I think one more thing I'll add is um, I was really surprised at how many people are, are passionate about early career development. There's so many people on my team who are constantly asking, mm -hmm. you know, where do you see yourself in five years? Or can I help yeah, you, you know, mm -hmm. learn, uh, like teach you this this cool thing that I learned recently? Um, because I think they've, they've been there. They mm -hmm. understand, um, especially the, some of the senior people, they understand that it's difficult um, navigating this new industry um, as, as a, an yeah. early career person. Um, so I've been just blown away by all the guidance that I've received, mm -hmm. and that definitely helps you feel like you belong. <laughs> or, yeah. you, know, you know, get rid of that, that voice in your head that tells you you can't do it, because yes, you 100% can. Yeah. yeah. And Maddie, and, did you want to add anything around your, you, when we talked to you, you had a comment about questions and not being afraid to ask yeah. questions, and one of your, your, what you tell yourself around that. Do you remember what yeah. you said to me? Um, yeah, so for me, like in meetings, if I like don't know what's going on, I'm like, I'll just accept that I'm gonna be the person asking like a bunch of questions. Um, Cause if I don't ask now, it's gonna be like an even dumber question yeah. like six months later <laughs> when like, like I haven't been having to work with it for so long. Um, so yeah, definitely asking questions as soon as possible. Yeah, um, and like a lot of times I'll ask a question and someone will come up and be like, "Thanks for asking that." Like I also didn't know mm -hmm. that, and like just realizing that like no one knows what they're doing. Like everyone has imposter mm -hmm. syndrome. They might not say it. They might be like super confident and like you think they're really smart, yeah. but like they also have this inner dialogue going on. Um, and one other thing I do is just like ask for feedback, and I'll ask people like, "How am I doing? Like what am I doing well? What am I doing mm -hmm. bad?" And it gives me a more realistic picture of what I'm doing mm -hmm. so it's not just like me evaluating myself it's hearing like the vibe I'm giving off to people and like what they think I'm doing so that's really oh, helpful that's great yeah all right, so um, one, one last question here that I want to okay. ask you. Um, so it's around uh, your work and your ability to have an impact. And so the projects you're doing and, and um, an impact you have on the greater world and on customers. So to get, tell us a little bit about that. Give us some, some thoughts around the, the work you're doing and the impact you're having. Totally. So I can start. Um, so I love working in the payment space. So a little bit of uh, what exactly I do in payments. Uh, so I work on a web application that allows our small business customers that use QuickBooks to essentially get paid for the work that they provide their customers. So um, there's something called an invoice, which is basically a receipt that um, that small businesses will send out to their customers for you know landscaping or chimney sweeping or whatever their small business does. Um, so I work on the e-invoicing team, and it allows, uh, so back in the day, you would 
make your invoice, you'd uh, put it in a letter and uh, mail it out, and two weeks later, you would hope that they'd send you a check back, walk into the bank, um, cash your check, and that's how you would get paid. Mm -hmm. So now with e-invoicing, we've completely made that online. So we have customers, our customers as in small business owners, getting paid within minutes. And mm -hmm. that is huge, that is huge, because that means their small business could potentially be more successful. They have more mm -hmm. revenue, um, more uh, funding available to make their business grow. So yeah. kind of streamlining that payments process and allowing our customers to be more successful um, and really pursue their, their dream in um, their small business, that's that's the impact. Mm -hmm. And so um, numbers-wise, I think the, the product that I work on, we process about 60 to 70 million dollars a day wow. so that sounds intimidating but mm -hmm. you know it's it's a small team of engineers at Intuit that yeah. that are processing um, all of that so that's, awesome. that's just yeah it's huge it's it's very inspiring yeah so. and that you're integral you're an integral team member making that all that happen yeah, yeah. yeah awesome. you are awesome how about you Jessica yeah, awesome. so what it what so far what, what you've dove into and how mm -hmm. you're having an impact yeah so um, I'm working on the customer success session mm -hmm. so um, um, several projects that my team is working on includes, um, for example, one that's uh, optimizing the call center resource allocation. That is, um, whenever a customer call into our Q and A system, mm -hmm. and they are mapping to an agent to answer their questions, mm -hmm. and we have found out that cur um, in current state the system is not as efficient as we want it to be. So we are think thinking about modeling it as an optimization problem that mm -hmm. we can have better matching of agents to answer customers' questions so that we can reduce the waiting waiting time and also we can solve customers' uh, problems as soon as possible. Mm, yeah. So that is one example. And one thing I feel especially um, that I'm making impact, even though I haven't joined the team for long, is that we actually had a, a business trip to Tucson where our call center is located at to observe how the agents cope with mm -hmm. customers' questions on mm -hmm. the spot. And I think that really helped me relate how my work is actually making impact on on the on the company and also on those agents, yeah. on customers. So I think Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Seeing that firsthand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And also the common and it doesn't matter whether I just joined um a few yeah. months ago. Yeah. I'm already given this opportunity mm -hmm. to go as a team you. member. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. I think that's really huge. That's cool. wonderful. Yeah. And how about you, Maddie? Tell us about the work you're doing and yeah. the impact you're having. For sure, yeah. So I work on um, a team that helps small businesses manage their payroll. Um, and so basically the page I work on is for people to sign up for payroll um, and also to upgrade to different models of payroll um, and then some other stuff too, but that's our main work right now. Um, and that's really important because like in high school, I worked at a lot of small businesses and I was on their payrolls and I could see like how stressful it was, um, especially at the really small ones because you know the owners and you know what they're doing every day. Um, and so for me, my work is really impactful because I know the users personally and I know that I'm like helping make their lives easier mm -hmm. by like empowering them to buy this product and like have them use this product that will just save them so much time. Um, and so that's really cool for me is like the personal aspect is that the users are people I know in my real life um, that have these really stressful situations around finances um, and just helping alleviate that stress a tiny bit. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's I love cool. it. Yeah. I love it with all that you're doing. Well, so that's all the questions we're asking and ask today. So thank you all for your uh, for joining us live. Um, again, I'll do a quick reminder for those of you joining us live. You do have the opportunity. We'll be raffling off an iPad, and so I think that you'll hear at, at, by the end of this week. But in order to do that, you need to send us a tweet, yeah. right? So help me remember. It's at Intuit <laughs> slash uh, hashtag TWI. So get that tweet out to us, um, so we can make sure you're in that drawing. Um, and thank you all of you who sent in the amazing and thoughtful questions. Yeah, thank um, you so much. Made, thank you. Yeah. Made it easy for us to, to share, um, uh, to know what, what to share with you and what would you wanted to hear from the most. 
Um, and then finally, if you are at all, um, so Intuit is always, always looking for, for uh, top talent, our next set of amazing technologists to join our team. So um, we're going to be kicking off that recruiting process. Um, so for interns and for um, new college grads. So look out for the emails. They'll be uh, for the emails that uh, coming from our talent acquisition team. Um, and uh, be sure to uh, see learn about the different opportunities that we have and how you can apply um, and be part of our team here yeah, at Intuit. We'd great. love to come work with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So thank you all again for joining. And um, and oh, one last thing: if you have any other questions that we didn't answer, feel free to sub submit those, and um, we'd love to love to be able to respond to them as well. So thank you all again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.